in the woods Dave Cadbury at the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd uh, talk about this morning is we've talked very extensively about shotguns and the 12 gauge and the versatility of that 12 gauge shotgun in the modern single shot essence of its 12 gauge, like the H&R's, New England's, things like that. What I want to talk to you about today was I want to talk to you about black powder shotguns, and we've had discussions in the past about flintlocks and smoothbore flintlocks, which are shotguns. Uh, my buddy Steve Davis did a really good thorough video on loading and shooting a flintlock uh, smoothbore. The gun that I have here is a Petrozoli double barrel 12 gauge cap lock smoothbore, and it shoots black powder. And it's called a cap lock because it shoots with a cap. Very similar to the way cap guns shot when you were a kid. The hammer struck it and it went pop. That's the way this type weapon fires. And these were really the first closed ignition system that was ever invented was the cap lock. And by the 1830s, across the frontier, cap locks were very popular. Just like any other weapon or any other tool, everything has limitations and everything has advantages. And you have to understand that so that you can take advantage of the advantages and overcome the limitations. The big advantage of this system compared to the flintlock is that it's weather protected from moisture and rain much more so than a flintlock that has an open pan that water can get into and affect the powder and it may not fire or it may misfire. So with this type system because the powder is all enclosed inside the barrel and all you have basically is a cap that sets it off and we'll talk about that in a minute that closes that ignition system and makes it less susceptible to moisture. Now, as soon as you do something like that, now you've added a component in the cap. So now instead of just having to have a rock, now I have to have a cap. So there's a limitation there, but in a lot of places it's hard to find flint anyway. So the big advantage of the flint lock being that you can find the ignition system laying about is not necessarily an advantage depending on where you live. Another advantage to a system like this is, is that it will shoot powders that the flintlock does not shoot very well. Flintlocks need real, true black powder in order to work very well. A cap lock gun like this will shoot modern equivalents like Pyrodex type powders. And you can find this stuff very cheap right now. I just bought three pounds of this Pyrodex RS, which is double FG equivalent, at Walmart on clearance for $10, $12 a pound. So I bought all three of them as soon as I saw them. Stock those things up and then you'll have them. Now, the caps that you buy for this, the number 11 cap is what this one shoots. And it depends on what size a nipple is, what size cap it needs. And I'll show you that in a minute when we talk about the components for using this type of firearm. But you want to make sure that you get a number 11 cap nipple. And you can replace those nipples in and out. If you, get a, if you buy an old one somewhere that has a different size nipple on it than number 11, Go online and order some number 11 nipples because that's the most common cap size available. And they're cheap. You can still get them. They're still available. I just bought, uh, I think, 500 of them from one of the sites. I think it was Sportsman's Guide at $499 100. I picked them up at a gun show last week for $699 100, I think it was. But that's still cheap for 100 shots of anything. And combined with, you know, $12 a pound for powder and anything you can shoot, anything you shove down the barrel is going to shoot out of here. But shot's not expensive to buy either, and you can make round ball yourself if you have a mold. A 12 gauge is basically 69 caliber-ish, so a 6875 ball with a good thick patch would work good out of this gun. So let's talk about what accoutrements I have to carry to be able to operate this gun and keep this gun firing and keep it in ammunition and keep it well maintained, and then we'll go to how to load and fire this gun. Okay, so, you know, like so many things out there, you can pretty much get as fancy as you want to get with the accoutrements that you buy. But you really don't need a whole lot to maintain and fire one of these weapons. We'll talk about maintenance after the fact. Let's talk about what it takes to be able to shoot it first. I need something that's going to hold my powder, and a powder flask will work just as good for that as a fancy powder horn. And these are pretty cheap, holds quite a bit of powder. Basically, you just push the button. Fill this charging nozzle. This one holds 30 grains. And then you can either put it into a powder measure, like this smashed piece of copper. Didn't hardly cost anything. 
where you could drill out a piece of antler or a piece of wood with the correct volume of powder. And this holds 30. This holds about 80. And I usually shoot between 60 and 80 out of my 12 gauges. Then you're going to need a capping device. And you don't even have to have this. But it makes it very convenient to store several caps inside this thing and push one forward into that set of alligator jaws. And then you can just put it on your nipple and it will clip out of there. Once you put it on there, I'll show you that when we go to load the gun. Then you can just reload it from the back side. Back here, it's spring-loaded. This T-tool right here is basically a nipple wrench for taking the nipple off to clean it or whatever the case may be. And it also has a nipple pick in the back side, which is just a thin piece of wire to clean that nipple out so that you've got that airflow in there that you need to be able to let that spark travel into the barrel where the powder is held. I have a small brass container here full of caps. There's probably 150, almost 200 caps in there. Then I have a small leather container here that has four shot in it, which would be something I'd use for like turkey. I've got one that's marked six, one that's marked eight for three different shot sizes. This tool we'll talk about in a minute. This basically is just for making preloaded ammunition, which you can do very easily for this gun. So I can take these three tools, put them around my neck, and really the only thing I need to put in my shot pouch is my extra caps whatever shot I'm going to carry, and my flask. You can shoot double F, G equivalent, or triple F. The triple F fires off a little bit faster, in my opinion, because it's smaller in grain size, which increases the surface area that those sparks can hit. But the double F will work as well. And this is the big advantage of a cap lock over a smooth bore, or I'm sorry, over a flint lock, is that getting this stuff to shoot out of a flint lock is a real pain but it'll shoot very easily out of a cap lock. So you can not only shoot regular black powder, you can also shoot black powder equivalents, which gives you one more advantage to the cap lock over the flint. Okay, so what we can do is we can load this just like we loaded the muzzle loader when we loaded our 12 gauge as a muzzle loader. We can load it the same as we load a flint lock as Steve Davis showed how to load a flint lock, or we can make preloaded loads for this thing that we can carry in our shot pouch or in a shot block and use it that way and it makes it very quick to reload. The advantage of having these two barrels obviously is two different loads and a quick follow-up shot. The problem with modern 12 gauges that I find that are double barrel, and a lot of guys have asked me about that, is that they're heavy. This thing is not heavy at all. It, I mean, it doesn't weigh any more. It probably weighs less actually than my H&R single shot 12 gauge does, to be honest with you. So I like the weight of this gun as far as the double barrel. So having that two barrel option just is more of a bonus for me. Okay guys, so let's load this firearm so that we can shoot it. Now, as long as there's no cap on these nipples, the gun is safe. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out our powder measure from our haversack and we're going to put a volume of powder into our powder measure. Okay. And we're going to put that down the right hand barrel because that's the one that's going to shoot with the front trigger. And you can see my powder measure actually fits down inside my barrel. I like that. Okay. Now, generally speaking, you can use, if you want to make your gun easy to clean out, you can use some type of a waxed or oiled, I shouldn't be say waxed, oiled type cloth. A lot of times what I use is just straight paper, especially if I can find some type of old packing paper or something like that. Because when I clean my barrel out, I usually use some type of a soap to clean it out with. And that generally will keep it pretty smooth on the inside and make it easier to clean. Once I put that volume of powder in, I'm going to ram it down in. I then get my shot, and again, remember, this gun is perfectly safe right now. It has no cap on it whatsoever. And I'm going to fill that measure up with the same volume of powder, or of shot. And in this case, like I said, this is number four shot I have with me today, which would be a turkey-type load. I will then take the shot and dump it. Again, advantage of having that thing the same 
slip right down inside the barrel. No muss, no fuss. Again, another piece of paper or another patch, whatever you're using for patching material, whether it be paper or whether it be cloth. Wad that up, shove that down the barrel. Again, pull the ramrod out, seat it all the way to the bottom. Now, once this gun has been capped, it's now ready to fire. So, if we put this gun on half cock, we pull our capping device out, we push one cap to the front. Put it on our nipple, and that one turns sideways on me just a little bit there. And you're going to have that sometimes. Pull it out, and then take the gun off half cock and seat it over the nipple and the cap until I'm ready to fire it. Okay, I'm going to zoom in here on a 25 yard pistol target. Then I'm going to step off to the side and fire this weapon so you guys can see what the pattern looks like when it hits the paper. This adjusted in really good. Guys, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate you joining me out here for another video today discussing the beginnings of cap lock guns, and we'll talk more about them in the future. Just wanted to introduce you to the basics of cap lock muzzle loading today. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my friends, my affiliates, and my sponsors. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.